This donut-shaped motor at CES 2025 could transform the future of electric vehicles. This motor is just insane. This is the most compact, super light if you compare the power output and with the smallest surface compared to anything I've tried and seen anywhere so far. The advertised numbers are astronomical and I like to see them in a real test. Donut Lab's newest hubless EV motor uses unconventional shape to reduce weight and increase power from a scooter application all the way to semi-trucks and helicopters. The technology presented at the stand looks alien to people that use EVs and numbers with designs presented are just phenomenal. Look how tiny this is. This is an electric motor designed for big drones. The shape and size is so compact, so tiny. You'll have to see the weight and all the specs after. And this is the bike that is a proof of concept. It has been tested for at least two years. I posted several videos about this model and all in detail performance and specs in a longer video. But if you look closely on this frame, this design, this wheel, this motor has a lot of cooling fans that I don't see on other prototypes. Also, there seems to be more aluminum, more metal for the clamping system that sits on the rim and also connects the motor with the rim to the frame. So all this contraption should, all this adapter should add more bulk and more weight to the other motors that is not being shown on the stands. Yeah, this one is this and I'll give you the donut lab as well, okay. it's here. All right, so let's find somebody who can give us some info. So this is the one from Donut Lab and okay. in the other side, there's a little spec sheet of the different motors we okay. have. Um, and here's a, a quick graph showing uh, power per kilogram and torque yeah, yeah. per kilo um, per or new, uh, newton meters per, per kilogram, and and this is automotive. So here you have Teslas and Lucids, um, and then some other hypercar projects. These are some of the in-wheel motors. So they're more torque dense, mm -hmm. um, and this is our motor. Okay. So it's the most torque dense and power dense motor that there is out there. Okay. Question: Are yeah. you the engineer with the team, or no, I'm not. can we get an engineer? Or somebody can yes. give us give us the specs and explain because uh, the math doesn't add up right there. The what? Uh, the math does not add up right there on that motor. The ma math doesn't add up. Add, yeah. add up, you would say. Well, I there is none of the engineers are right now there. Or somebody, chief, or somebody who product know. officer just came. Okay, let's talk with him. Yeah. Bill, what are you saying? We have questions for you. Can you walk us through like technical specs details of, I mean, if one or a couple of motors because this motor, to be honest. 15, 15 kilowatts of power, there's not enough meat there to hold that thing in one place. Like if you look at the, what, what kind of metal you, you use in that frame, right? Uh, so, especially on the inside, it needs to be aluminium because that's the heat sink. But then the I understand, outside, you but can you have magnets inside, right? You have wire, yeah, you have copper wiring going through, right? So yeah, so all the stuff inside, so you need volume space, right? Yeah. But then to hold all this together, you only have these brackets, right? Top and bottom, those holes where the screws goes to the frame, right? So when you put 15 kilowatts, how would that, would that not twist? Well, that's the easy bit. I mean, that's 15 kilowatts, that's 630 kilowatts. So can, can you explain us how this works? Because like, it's not much steel or you said aluminum, right? There's not enough aluminum to like, yeah. it's gonna heat up, right? When you go fast. Yeah, but that's, uh, in this one, there's liquid cooling on the inside. So it, there's basically a liquid cooling jacket uh, right next to the state of laminations mm -hmm. where basically the uh, heat from the copper yeah, you, is, is gonna go to the state of lamination and there's a very short heat path to the uh, cooling jacket. Yeah. So you're saying the outside is gonna be cool, it's not gonna get hot, right? Uh, the inside is the only cooling. Uh, or the only bit that requires cooling. So on the outside, you only have the permanent minus, which in this design, they don't heat up at all. Basically. Oh, okay, I see. So 630 kilowatts, that's just astronomical number yeah, for any vehicle. The rubber, I don't know if you can support that. The rubber is going to melt, you know, <laughs> if you go full yeah, power. Uh, we are kind of uh, working on a couple of hypercar applications with this one, where you would put like a, a one of each, uh, or one of these motors on each of the rear tires and then maybe 50% of that on the front tires. I don't think you need to, if you have so much power, you don't need yeah, to. That, yeah, I mean, you, if you want to do the, like, uh, redo all of the performance uh, like uh, records, then that's the that's way to the, do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's like a total system output of something like two and a half thousand horsepower. That's insane. I mean, this looks like a, I don't know, like, it's just, look how smooth it is. It's just beautiful. 
Yeah. And all these openings, that's just screws that are going through, right? That, that yeah, sandwich, so that's right? that's the bolt pattern for the To wheel. hold it together, right? Yeah. yeah. So that's for the wheel. So it doesn't hold the whole like motor together. That's only for the wheel. So it's basically the same as we do in, on the motorcycle, but just in a bigger format. I posted a short of the motorcycle. It has 4.7 million views, I think, two years ago. Yeah. I, I think I was the first one who posted on the internet. And, uh, and then I posted a video with, uh, with the Virtue team yeah. And I think got like 400,000 views. That was like a year and a half ago. Yeah. They showed the bike more in detail. But that time it was like a prototype that was not unveiled yet. So it was like yeah. kind of like collaboration with them to share the information on the channel. But this is like, how do you mount the, the tire? Where the tire goes? Like, uh, So the wheel and the tire are a separate uh, unit. So that's on the bolt pattern here. So you have like a, like a, a side that holds the tire on top that bolts into this, right? Yeah, so it's basically like a, you can take a conventional tire which or a conventional yeah. wheel which has the spokes and everything, but you just remove the spoke bit. And you have like a rim bed that goes on top of this, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it's beautiful, it's beautiful. Yeah, so it's basically the same concept in the motorcycle already yeah. visible. So it's... Uh, it just Here you don't have those fins and it looks like so smooth, right? Yeah, because the, this is the only liquid-cooled version we are oh, so the, here. So that those fins are for the air, air cooling. Air cooling, so yeah. It's, uh, like a massive heating yeah. you know, the inside so and that's the, enough for a motorcycle or a scooter or anything but then we're going for like two-thirds of the peak power is also continuous power on this one I see, I see, I see. so there you need the liquid cooling because these are some absurd numbers right? yes for, yes for yes yes power. absolutely yeah and it's only 40 kilograms it's insane it's so light so when this will uh, see the the roads when it's gonna hit the roads do you know by any chance like time frame uh, in a product that's delivered to customers, that's going to take uh, some time because we are working with some OEMs uh, from startups and motorsport applications to the big OEMs in the automotive world. Do you have but estimation? We are going to be doing some demonstrator units and like. Uh, and how long from now? Motorsport applications. They might even be start or uh, starting to happen this year. This year? Oh, this year is good. It's good. It's yeah. good. But then the kind of uh, final products for like consumers that usually takes many many years for yeah. the automotive testing, product. approving, yeah, yeah. Yeah, the validation might take one year alone. So yeah, yeah. Anything else you have uh, cool for us uh, about those motors that we can go over? Well, have you seen the drone? Oh, the uh, drone is going to the drone. Yeah, yeah that's so super do, compact. We do all kinds of applications. It's not just rubber wheels. So this is also uh, a drone, like a small version of the drone motor. So this is three kilowatts. And uh, the trick is that we do do it with uh, like many times more torque than the competition in these kind of typical drone motors. So we can get the kilowatts with lower speed, which increases the efficiency because you can make the blade design to be very like big if you just run it uh, with lower RPM, but you get the same power. So basically, you can get lift with uh, higher efficiency. And the same trick basically applies also for things like, uh, for example, the Hyper-Q. That's going to be like a big, big helicopter. Is the, let's go there for a second. Is that a product you guys are going to develop or is that a company who does the... So Hyper-Q Hyper Aerospace is a Australian company developing this one. So it's going to be your partner, right? You guys are going to yeah. partner with them. So uh, basically, Donut App is a business-to-business -business model where we have... Uh, a whole bunch of uh, OEMs, all the way from small startups and even individual guys doing like motorsport applications, all the way to the biggest like automotive giants and all that, and everything in between. Uh, so HyperQ is one of them. Uh, they are now developing this kind of a very heavy lift capable uh, helicopter, which is also going to be the fastest helicopter ever. Wow! Because it's going to be using uh, those 17-inch motors. Uh, and six of them to provide the lift, and oh. then two of them to provide the thrust. Stability so in the back, yeah. Uh, yeah. So that's for the... Oh, forward like thrust, let's see, see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's also like a small fixed wing capability. Yeah, I see, I see. I mean, I, I honestly, and I mentioned in other videos, every CES I was coming for the last four or five years, it was a gradual progression, like going up, like cool yeah. stuff, cool stuff, cool stuff. And this year, it's like it hit the wall. I didn't see anything that would be like, wow. I only saw the Cybertruck. That yeah. had like solar panels embedded into like a wrap. Yeah, I just that, saw it. Yeah, it's, it's cool, right? Yeah. And it's, it can give you 30 to 40 miles per day if you like, you know, stop somewhere. Yeah. It's just, that's insane, right? It's way really good. And it's done that you don't see it's like a solar powered wrap. It just looks cool camouflage, right? Yeah. And now this, and this is, I think, the best product. I've, somebody told me about donut motors. I'm like, what donut motor? Like, what are you talking about? <laughs> oh, it has 600 kilowatts of power. I'm like, it's impossible. This is like yeah. physically, mathematically, it's impossible, right? The rubber will not support that kind of force. 
And then I walked by, I saw donut. I'm like, hold on a second. This is something I heard somewhere recently about this. And I saw the, the thing, oh, that's the motor. And uh, I was not imagining to be like that. Like the motorcycle thing, because of the fans and stuff over there, it looks so different. It's like more realistic. Yep. But here is like, it's like too much, but not much to see, you know? It's like, it's yeah. so compact and thin, it's impressive. And this works and it's actually, you guys come to the market next one or two years. I mean, everybody's gonna want that. Yeah, I mean, like it's school, gonna this, start going pretty crazy pretty soon. Yeah, this, and I'm sure if you guys did this, I mean, you guys, I'm sure somebody already think of next step, right? And then yeah. somebody's gonna see, it's gonna create an open opportunity to, to, to go wild, right? Like, this is yeah. insane. I saw um, a motorcycle, I have to post this video on the uh, ICMA show in Milan. Yeah. It's a bike, it's gonna cost super expensive, but it's a motor, like a flux motor without magnets. Yeah. And it's quiet and also, they, it's a small motorcycle, like it's the, the same size, right? Yeah. But he's like, I forgot, like 500 or 300 or 200 like, kilowatt of power. I'm like, this is impossible, there's no room. And he covered everything. He didn't want to tell me what's inside to show me, but he's like, next year, I'll have the bike for you. You can come and just ride it. And I'm like, yeah. but the bike is gonna be super expensive. Yeah. Yeah, custom for one of a kind customer, like who's like a you know, Hollywood star, or maybe like somebody who's like a business, you know, yeah. like mogul, successful, like billionaire, right? Not like a regular Joe to buy the bike, so. Yeah. But that's how it starts. It starts yeah, expensive exactly. and then gradually goes down, right? Yeah, so we are at, actually at the point where we can provide the highest amount of uh, performance per kilogram, but also the highest amount of performance per dollar. Okay. So this is not I like only that. the best, but it's also the cheapest way of doing it. The whole mm. powertrain, that is. So, it, for example, in the hypercar, we did a study with the same amount of power using like a conventional centralized powertrain. We are removing 100 kilos of power from the whole system and also 200 liters of uh, space on the kind of axle so you can utilize that with like uh, aerodynamics or we can play more the shape you can do more yeah, yeah, yeah exactly yeah. but then additionally you're almost halving the or in some cases you're more than halving the uh, bill of materials cost for the manufacturer so finally hypercars will have more storage for your luggage no more like a little bit yeah, of space yeah we exactly. have so much more space because this and i actually i posted a short on Instagram about Lucid Motor. You yeah. know, Lucid Motor was the smallest till like last year or now like there's so many more options. Even Mercedes has like hybrid engines with uh, electric like, drives that have two in serious motors that work together and mm -hmm. each one helps each other. And I mentioned in the short that this is the first one that actually is maintenance free. It doesn't require service and it's 2.2 million views, but half is people who are haters who are like, it's impossible, this and that. And I'm like, I drive a Model X for like last three, four years, 47,000 miles. I just plug in, plug out, I don't do anything. Yeah. I change the tires and there's no maintenance. And they're like, no, that's impossible. You're just, you know, drinking Kool-Aid or something, you know. People are like that limited, you know. And yeah. what maintenance here? Just, just even, just bearings, right? There's nothing to replace. But yeah, bearings is millions bearings of miles too. The, the only part that actually touch each other. Yeah, and I mean, here's barely touching. Yeah. Ceiling and like, for example, in the mold, uh, motorcycle motor, we do like an additional seal plate uh, just for that kind of, uh, additional covering so that uh, you can even park that in the in the sea or something and then and it doesn't <laughs> have nothing right yeah yeah, yeah. So you see you're people gonna be like uh, uh, doing the lifetime of the motor based on the lifetime of the vehicle or, or that should be always the goal yeah so like there's no reason why we wouldn't design uh, the scooter motor always to be a lifetime motor for the scooter but then in some like motorsport applications for sure you might have some crazy like exotic things happening where yeah. you need to replace some bearing or something like this but that's like not for the average consumer it's yeah. not the case yeah performance and stuff yeah, yeah yeah it's insane this is amazing this is really impressive and i can't believe it. so last question did you guys tested the motor with verge or yeah. Verge created this team? Uh, it's a, uh, a long story. So we basically started with the motorcycle business like seven years ago already. And we did a whole bunch of proof of concepts, uh, Testing developing the, the motor. And we've done many, many different generations. And even now, uh, or every now and then, just uh, cleaning the table and starting from scratch before we arrived at that point. And that's already pretty awesome. But then everything you see here, this is like totally different New, yeah. structure. So basically the only carryover from that one to like uh, the next generation is, uh, is the bearings and stuff like I see, this. I see. Impressive, impressive. So all of the active materials are 
pretty much max level in everything you see here. No matter nice, the nice. Uh, size. So the same applies to the drone motor in 3 kilowatts and the hypercar motor in 600 kilowatts. It's uh, basically the same, same kind of technologies. And it's not just like one or two innovations that we came up with and then magically it's better, but uh, it's more like a uh, hundred small ideas compressed into the same motor. I see, I see, impressive. But also, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, this can be used in trucks, right? Yeah. And like 18 wheelers, like you yes, saw in the. That's the semi truck version. So that's bigger than this, right? But the same design, it's right? The same same motor roughly, uh, mm -hmm. but just optimized uh, oh, the winding configuration is a uh, slightly different. Triple one, power, yeah. Then we bring that to a centralized, uh, like a conventional hub. You can actually see a glimpse of it there. 21 inch, so I see. Basically, uh, then you can use the uh, standard hub as you you would use in any other semi, semi truck, and also the brake components and everything. So you don't need to reinvent the world uh, to use this kind of stuff. And that same applies in in some other use cases. Like uh, not every donut motor is going to be visibly like a donut. Like there might be some covering, like fairings, and uh, like some wheels might be for specific or yeah. like uh, aerodynamics in a specific use case or something like this. So it's not all, all going to be just donut, but the same principle core, yeah. Yeah, same active materials and same overall packaging, but then some extra uh, Ad adapted to specific application. Yeah, that's insane. So thank you so much. Yeah. I really yeah. enjoyed it. This is really cool. I hope people watch and understand that when somebody who's uh, the head of engineering and say that this is what it is, it's what it is. Yeah. Because people <laughs> comment and they, you don't know, you have no idea who's behind the comment and what knowledge they do have. And people just like talk nonsense. So much money to be here and invest in the stack, millions of billions of dollars. It has to work, right? It's not like just like you put something fake and you just talk about this. It's real, yeah. it's coming and it's gonna be around probably in a year, two or three or five years, and it looks like it's gonna work. And yeah. it's, it's beautiful and it's amazing. So thank you again for, for the information and hopefully to see you soon next time.